Today we're going to be looking at uh, the applications installed on this M5 stack and there really is something for everyone here. Um, you can look at the uh, oscilloscope function, uh, the handy weather report and uh, Wi-Fi tools. Now the Wi-Fi tools will be of particular interest for those of you who play around with uh, ESP32 uh, devices or 8266 as it, it includes the, uh, the smart config feature and this allows you to connect to various Wi-Fi networks without having to reflash just using your smartphone. Vamos! Probably one of the most um, anticipated parts of the program, the app, is the oscilloscope. So let's uh, take a look at that. Now it has its own internal waveform generator. So uh, that's hooked back to the channel 1 input right now. And we can see the nice square wave there. And if we just run through the, the menus briefly, um, obviously we have uh, volts per division for each channel. There are two channels. We can change the uh, the time base. Uh, we can change the trigger mode. No, so that's not the trigger mode. That's the input. So normal, inverted, and off. Not quite sure how useful off is, but there we go. And the same for channel two. And then you have an, an offset so you can move the waveform up and down using this uh, feature. Uh, it would be nice if when you held the button down it would uh, do that automatically because you're going to be there an awful long time otherwise. And what else have we got? Um, this is the trigger channel. So at the moment it's triggering on channel 1. Obviously we change it to 2, it's not going to trigger nothing on to at the moment. Then we have the trigger mode, auto, norm, scan, or one frame. This is the trigger value. So which point in the waveform it's going to trigger and whether it's going to trigger on or up. And then we can look at the different waveforms. So there's a, a triangle uh, like a sawtooth type thing, off, and a sine wave. Let's just try and get that stable. Anyway, you get the idea. So that's using the internal uh, frequency generator, the test, and somewhat unusually, um, if we look at two milliseconds per division, uh, let me just freeze this for a moment. So, if we take that as being 2 milliseconds per division, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, looks like 10 milliseconds, and 10 milliseconds is a uh, frequency equals 1 over time, 100 hertz, which is uh, unusual for a, for a test frequency. I would expect to see a kilohertz, but uh, there we go. So as a test, let's use my little signal generator here, which is set to 100 hertz also at 3 volts. And we can see the output on my oscilloscope here. Uh, built these both from kits, so uh, check those out. Um, but if we, we need to have our ground reference, so that's the ground pin there. And our channel 1 is on pin 35 is there and we get something rather strange now it looks like it's clipped it's only showing half the waveform and for life of me I do not understand why I fiddled around with all this all the settings um, clearly on the oscilloscope here this is half a volt per division so that's two three volts peak to peak um, which is also what it's set to, so that, that all agrees. And if we look here, we're at one volt per division, so it's only showing one and a half volts on this, on this peak. So what's happening below? Uh, it's not being truncated. If we go to the offset, we can move the trace up 
but it doesn't reveal anything more. So that's a mystery. Uh, if anybody has a, a solution for me, or I'm doing something obviously wrong, then uh, please comment. Let's take a look at the weather app now. Um, to start with, you can say that it uses the Weather Underground um, website and the API to, uh, to get the weather data. Now, unfortunately, in uh, Weather Underground's infinite wisdom, uh, they have decided no longer to issue free API keys. So uh, the developer, Kalin, has very kindly let me have access to his key for this, uh, this demonstration. And in the future, he's working upon uh, a different version that will be using probably open weather in, instead. So let's take a look. If we go into the application, we can see the usual type of uh, information that we get uh, in uh, sunny downtown Zahena right now where I am. It's uh, a balmy 27.9 degrees and uh, with no possibility of rain. Uh, it's not very likely. This part of uh, southern Spain is technically the only desert in northern Europe. So what other information is available? Well, there's a general sort of overview there with the humidity and uh, wind speed and such like, and the sunrise and set times, and the forecast, as I say, uh, no chance of rain. So an excellent little app, and uh, many thanks again to, to, to Callin, and I uh, look forward to seeing uh, the revised version soon. Just before we look at the apps themselves, uh, there's other information that we can get. Um, with regards to the, the system itself, we can look at the information with regards to the, the processor and such like. Uh, also the Wi-Fi. Now, we'll come back to the Wi-Fi last. Uh, you can adjust the backlight for the display and finally return. So let's just look at the Wi-Fi connections. There are various options. The options you can see, Wi-Fi Smart Config, WPS button, put in the pin directly, or you can change the device into station access point or switch the Wi-Fi off. Now the Wi-Fi Smart Config is an interesting one because uh, there's always uh, an, an issue with these types of devices uh, if you go to a different network, uh, normally you would have to reflash the firmware to understand the new SSID that you want to connect to and indeed the password. And that's a, a real pain. But fortunately, there's a, an app we can get for the, the smartphone. And we'll take a look at how that works now. So on the smartphone itself, um, you need to connect obviously the smartphone to the network uh, which you're wanting to connect the M5 stack to and put in your password. And uh, you also have the option, uh, if the SSID is hidden, to, to put that in there. So that's all set up. Uh, all we need to do now is to go into the smart config and it send, starts sending packets and we press confirm. and success. So we can see on the device um, that uh, it's connected to my, uh, my local network. So that's uh, simple. Web radio function is pretty self-explanatory. Also, uh, if we just select it, I've programmed in uh, one of our local Spanish rock stations here, and uh, this keeps us rocking all day long. Uh, the internal speaker is okay, it's not, not, that, not that great, but uh, it shows the, the principle of the thing. Let's take a look at the web server application. So here on the laptop, uh, I've opened a new browser window and 
those of you who are of an observant nature will have seen that I'm using 192.168.7.101 was the address given to the device and obviously it's not running at this time so you go into the application and uh, I'm not sure if there's a, a bug or a, or a feature but uh, it seems to start automatically so now if we reload the page we can indeed see the uh, the contents of the SD card uh, in the corner there and uh, it opens by default the uh, the first file which is the index.htm so we can look for example at the uh, at the radio stations.txt that we've seen before and we can do various other other things so it might be a useful feature sharing files around the SD browser is self-explanatory I think so with no, nothing really to look at in there uh, the tools are quite interesting if we go into the tools menu um, we can see a Wi-Fi packet monitor and a scanner an I squared C scanner for you need to at attach something externally to to monitor that and equally for the uh, the DHT the sensor I don't have one of those to hand right now and stopwatch um, let's look first at the Wi-Fi scanner and it's found three networks the network that I'm connected to is on channel 9 and I have two other available networks on channel 1 and channel 10 so if we go and take a look at those with the packet monitor there we are on channel 10 we can begin to see the graph growing there in in the corner we flip down now to channel 9 we can see the traffic represented there it's the network that I'm connected to and finally if we flip down to channel 1 you can see the data coming in there so that could be quite a, a novelty so getting out of that if we go down as I say I can't use the I squared C scanner right now or the DHT and the stopwatch well it's a stopwatch Other than that, we have uh, the games, Alien Shooter, let's uh, have a look at that. And not surprisingly, we can uh, kill the aliens there. Now, there's, we have to press the reset button, that's the only way to get out of uh, the games. And the Flappy Bird. Well, that looks like game over to me.